I think as a product manager, which is essentially what you are as a, as a co-founder, as a startup CEO, is you're a product person. Um, it's a delicate balance between what you take in, uh, you know, where do you listen to people and, and where do you actually just stick to your guns. Um, one of the, the complaints people have had about user voice in the past is that, hey, using tools like user voice to help you get customer feedback at scale, doesn't this kind of lead to de direct democracy of, of products? Um, yeah. Living in California, so very, very familiar with how bad direct democracy can be. And so our answer is no, right? So, you know, you should, you should use tools like user voice or any kind of customer feedback tool, and you should use customer feedback where it's helpful to, uh, you know, augment your vision or maybe make you question key, uh, I guess, key assumptions, right? Your vision usually has key assumptions. And so if you're getting customer feedback and not just, I want this thing five pixels to the left, but you're hearing stories that don't quite validate or kind of orthogonal to your original hypotheses or assumptions, it's something to look at. Um, I think the main thing is, you know, early on is, is the difficult thing is finding the right customers, right? Because if you find, and we struggled with this early on in user voice, if you find a lot of, if you get a, if you're a platform and you have lots of different users, you might find one group of users doesn't fit with your vision. So for example, for user voice, our vision originally was when I was working on Kiko, we had, you know, I struggled as a designer to connect with our, you know, we had like 5,000 active users. I really struggled with connecting with those 5,000 active users, knowing what they want us to do with our online calendaring product. And so user voice was originally designed to be this kind of connective tissue between a SaaS company and its customers. And then we launched user voice. And as it grew up, we got used by lots of government agencies. We were used inside companies. So company IT departments were using it to get feedback from the rest of their employees. Um, and this was really cool and it, you know we didn't say no to these customers or these users and we, we got really excited that they were using it because it was all the way up to the White House was using it um, but it became difficult at one point because you know our vision was always was, wasn't you know we never had a vision of how government should connect with citizens and we didn't necessarily have a vision of how companies you know large companies should collaborate internally and, and uh, you know kind of crowdsource feedback and so while our product worked well for those audiences and still does it was one of those things where a lot of the feedback we would get might kind of undermine our vision with what we were trying to do for companies like ourselves, like Kiko and like UserVoice, these web SaaS companies. And so I think one of the key things between balancing feedback and following your vision is making sure that the feedback is from the right people. Um, and so eventually we kind of doubled down and said, hey, look, you know, there's a great market for internal collaboration as you know, now evidenced by things like Yammer um, and Jive and, and, and a lot of those type of products. But we've never worked inside a large company. So it's hard for us to get passionate and really understand that idea or have a strong vision around that. Same thing with government. Uh, you know, I love a lot of the work we do with government, but I don't know necessarily the challenges of government. So you know, I have to kind of stick with, my vision has to be tied to something I think I know something about, which is running SaaS companies. And so then the customer feedback became easier. And in our case, a big piece of customer feedback was, we need a bigger solution. We need more of a solution, which, was tough because our vision originally was very narrow. Like keep a, you know, we want, I think, which is kind of in vogue, keep a very small product footprint, do one thing really well. Um, but our customers weren't telling us this. this cu our customers are saying, we need you to do three things really well. Um, one of those is gathering customer feedback, one of them is gathering customer support. Um, and so we kind of amended our vision and, and felt like that still fits into our model of being connective tissue. It just expands what things we're connecting on, not just feedback, but support. Again, so back to kind of the, the non-answer to the answer, where do you draw the line? It, it just depends, right? I, I tend to think feedback is good for challenging core assumptions about a market or about what you're doing, right? Um, and it's, but it's really vital kind of in the last mile. So the one place where I almost completely delegate to users are in matters of usability um, and you know, very specific use cases. So I think your vision can get you 80% of the way. However, there's so much competition now. There's so many startups, there's so many web companies. Um, the last mile matters a lot, and my, my go-to example on this is iPhone versus Androids, right? You know, I, I, I still believe the, the iPhone is a better experience, and I think it's a better experience. They're 95% the same product, but the last mile is subtly different. And I think you get the last mile is not about vision. The last mile is about execution, and part of that execution is really listening to customers and figuring out where they're struggling and kind of the, the margins.